All right, we are live. All right, Elder Bostic, if you want to get started. Can you hear me, Elder? Elder Bostic? She might be having some connectivity issues. We're going to go ahead and get started. Maybe she'll be able to get in sooner or later. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For this is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining us again today. Uh, watching by Facebook. Again, we welcome you to partake of Church of Christ Ministries to our virtual Sunday school class. And if you'd like to join us and be a part of the discussion uh, today, you can join us in Zoom. If you want to join us on Zoom in the classroom, you can do so by going to partake of Church of Christ Ministries on the Facebook page and go to events. And once you go to events, uh, you can just scroll down until you get to Sunday school. And once you get to Sunday school, you can click on the link and it will bring you into the classroom. But we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here at Partakers, where our pastors, Pastor Michael J. Isaac Sr. and First Lady Angela Isaac. And uh, we thank God for you. This morning, out of all the ministries you could have joined, we thank you for joining us this morning. And the title of our lesson is Jesus by the Sea of Tiberias. And the lesson text comes from John 21 one through 14. And the related scriptures is Luke chapter five, verses one through 11, John chapter 20, verses 19 through 29, John 21 through 15 and 25. And our golden text says, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after, after that he was risen from the dead. And that's John 21 and 14. All right, at this time, we're going to ask if Deacon Edwards, I'm sorry, we're going to take prayer first. I'm not sure if Elder Bostic, are you, are you with us? Are you able to hear us? I'm able. Okay. I, I wanted to go ahead and get started because I, I, he wasn't responding at first. I, think I appreciate you, you. No, no, no. I appreciate it. You had some technical difficulties there, still. I'm still having technical difficulties. With 5G of Verizon, I'm still having technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you want to take it from here, I appreciate it. God bless you. Okay, we're going to thank you, um, Elder, for stepping in. We're going to take a prayer request at this time. If anyone has them. Yes, to the uh, Edwards family in prayer for the passing of my first uh, cousin, Tim Edwards. Uh, he'll be funeralized on Wednesday. So can you keep the Edwards family and his immediate family in prayer? Uh, the Dodson family, the Cahill family, the Deacon family, and uh, partake of Church of Christ ministry, Pastor, First Lady, and our youth in Arcadia. Uh, anyone else have a prayer request? Yeah, pray for uh, Olivia Jones. Um, pray to God, uh, they, uh, from my understanding, had a procedure Friday. Pray that it was success. I haven't talked to my um, co-worker yet, but pray that it was success. Pray for the peace in, in our country and uh, especially uh, those in Ukraine uh, that are fighting to keep their country. Um, so many people pushed out of their homes. Um, it's, it's just, you know, and, you know, pray for that situation. Mm -hmm. or, um, the unsafe point, um, pray for those that are unemployed, those that are homeless. Uh, pray for my Uncle Michael. Uh, also pray for um, Missionary Pat, uh, LaVar and Thompson. Pray for uh, Aaron Isaac also. I'm going to just ask that you, I just got word this morning that Bishop Best, I don't know if you knew him. Um, I can't think of his first name, but he passed away this morning. Um, 
I can't even think of the name of his church. I was so overtaken by the words. Uh, he was supposed to be celebrating his 85th birthday this weekend. So just ask that you pray for it. I got the best family and continue to keep the rolling family and your prayers who lost her youngest son and my aunt Marie that um, she's still battling with the brain cancer. We just thank God for what he has brought, where he has brought her from. But this is like the second round that has come up. So starting to overtake in our minds. We just have prayer and prayers. <clears throat> So I ask that you pray for Andrea Isaac and the passing of her mother and also pray for her dad, um, Alfonso Isaac and the Beckworth family. And the what family? Beckworth? Um, Beckworth, yes, that was her mother's um, No, no. Name. Beckwith. 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 I'm sorry. Back, Beckwith. Beckwith. Thank you, Pastor. Beckwith. Yes. So much to pray for. Is there any other prayer requests? Now we're going to go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, first of all, we want to say thank you for this day that you allow us to see. We thank you for just giving us an opportunity to lift up your holy name and give your name to praise. And God, as we start our Sunday school, we want to ask you, Heavenly Father, if you will bless those that are going through bereavement this morning, the Edwards family, the um, Andrea Isaac family, and the Betwith family, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would continue to touch those and touch their hearts, God, and give them comfort that they need in a time of bereavement. And God, we also pray that you would touch those that all the prayer requests that have gone up this morning, uh, whatever situation, circumstances that it might be, we ask God that you would touch the Dodson family, the Cahill family, our PCCM family, our first lady and our pastor, our youth and our Cahill, oh God. And we ask that you continue to touch Olivia Jones, who had a procedure or a surgery, God. You know them all by heart, God. And we ask that your will would be done, God. And we pray that that surgery was a success. And God, we ask that you would just bless our country on today. Give us the uh, peace in our um, country, God, and in, in the Ukraine. That so much is going on. And God, you said that there will be wars and rumors of wars. And God, we are trusting and believing that you have all things under control. And God, we just want to thank you this day, God, for just being a prayer answering God. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for just waking us up this morning, clothing our right mind. But no, God, we ask you, would you continue to touch uh, the... Um, Cornelia's family, I believe, Lord God, Isaac's family, touch the um, sister Laverne. And Lord, you know, you heard the prayer request this morning. We may not be able to jot all the names down, but God, we just ask that you would bring healing in the land, God. We ask that you would touch those that are suffering with uh, depression, oh God. We ask that you would touch those that may have some cancer in their bodies, God. We ask that you would touch those, God, that just we know that you are our friend, God, and we thank you, God, for all things. We praise you, God, and as we come this morning, God, we also ask that you would touch our mother of the church. Oh, God, we ask that you touch Mother Melton in the name of Jesus, and God, as we get into our Sunday school, give us an ear to hear what thus says the Spirit of the Lord, that we will be able to open up our minds and our understanding. Facebook this morning, God. We ask that you would touch them, heal them, and deliver them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 That's God. Amen. As um, Ella Milton said that, oh, we're going to ask Deacon Isaac. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Gave you a new name. Deacon Edwards. <laughs> and we do our Apostle Creed. <laughs> Your family. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born unto Virgin Mary, uh, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and there he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from which he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of body and life everlasting. Amen. 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 Praise God. We thank you. And as um, Ella Milton has said that our Sunday school lesson today is Jesus by the Sea of 
Tiberius. Amen. Um, I, I'm going to read the introduction that I'm not sure if everyone has it in their Sunday, Sunday school book. But, um, it helped to enlighten what our lesson was all about. And it says that uh, the resurrection of Jesus was not something the disciples came up with by putting their hands together on the subject. The resurrection is more than just a doctoral belief. It has its bias, I mean, its basis in fact. It is a historical reality that can be verified through historical research, including multiple eyewitness accounts. Jesus rose from the dead and made appearance to his disciples, some of whom were skeptical at first. If you are skeptical of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you are not alone. But know that untold numbers of skeptics upon examining the scriptural record and concerning the historical evidence have become convinced followers of the resurrection, um, Lord of life. So, um, you know, it says that a lot of people are still skeptical that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you know, but we follow the scripture, we follow the word of God, you know, that, you know, we are convinced that he rose from the dead, you know, and even in scripture, it tells us um, through the, the the four readings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they was there, you know, so we believe by faith to the word of God that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And we see evidence of him, you know, even through our walk of our Christian life, we still can see the evidence that he still, he exists and he did rose and that he had all power in his hands. So, you know, um, not sure how some people just, just don't want to believe, but, you know, as believers in Christ, it's our job to let them know, let be a witness to let them, everyone know that Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day. Um, introducing the lesson and, and it's just an overview of what our lesson is talking about this morning you know, that this was um, the third time that the disciples had saw him so it's an interesting lesson and we um, the, um, let me go. Uh, our today's aim is that to confirm that Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day and appeared to his disciples and the principle was to recognize that Jesus' resurrection was physical and guaranteed life to all who believed in him. And the application is to know the power of Jesus' resurrection by family trusting that he is the giver of life to those who believe in him. So again, the word is that the, for those that believe in him, that we know that he had all power in his hand when he rose, um, you know, and we trust um, that he is the giver of our life, that Jesus Christ is the center of our life and that, you know, we honor him and we acknowledge him through all things that, we, you know, do, you know, in our walk of life that we acknowledge him. So, you know, we just have to apply the word of God to it as believers in Christ Jesus. Um, anybody else would like to add to that? <clears throat> If not, we have three lessons outlined, um, unsuccessful fishing trip, um, a sudden abundance and fellowship with Jesus. But first we're gonna read our scripture. If anyone on Facebook would like to follow us, our lesson again is St. John, the 21st chapter verses one through four. And we're gonna ask if each and every one would take three scriptures a piece. And if there's any left um, over, um, we ask mother, uh, Melton, if she'd go first, Sister Pat, um, second, um, Digging Edwards, third, and Ella Milton, fourth. Um, I'm not sure if First Lady's on to participate, but that should be able to wrap up all the scriptures. John 21, verse 1, 2, and 3. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. 
Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast their forth, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore the disciples whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, his, his, his girt, he girt his fisher his fisher's coat unto him, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as as soon then hold it. Wait a minute. And the other disciples came into a little ship, for they were not far from the land, but it was it was were two hundred cubic dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they came, as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coal there and fish laid thereof and bread. Jesus said unto them, bring of the fish which ye have caught, that you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net and <clears throat> drew the net to land full of great fishes in hundreds and fifties and three, 50 and three. And for all there were so many yet were not uh, was not the net break uh, broken. Jesus said unto them, "Come and come and dine." And none of the disciples durst ask him, "What art thou? Who art thou?" Knowing that it was the Lord. Let me keep going. Thank you. Jesus, Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Interesting, interesting. This is a good, um, I guess when I was taught about this scripture, you know, we look at it spiritually, you know, and naturally. So we're gonna get into it because, you know, my teaching may have been a little bit different than yours. So we're gonna get right into our, uh, our lessons outline um and then i can ask the questions as i go to see if oh. not to say that you know we weren't on the same one accord but some teaching was just a little bit different you know yeah okay. question right. yes ma'am no question um today's aim she did that already i did that already oh she did oh well yes, done okay thank you it's mm -hmm. okay you had your coffee yet, sis <laughs> <laughs> all Man. right okay so our first outline is unsuccessful unsuccessful fishing trip if i can get a reader for that introducing the statement i can read it for you okay sweetheart thank you mm -hmm. introductory statement John 21 and 1, after these things refers to the events of chapter 20, these include Peter and John's initial visit to the empty tomb. Jesus' appearance to Mary Magdalene, Jesus' appearance to the 10 disciples, and then his appearance a week later when Thomas was present. If the gospel had concluded at this point, it would have seemed quite natural, but then we have chapter 21 often referred to as John's ep epilogue. It contains information about an otherwise unknown appearance of the risen Lord that occurred at the Sea of Galilee, identified here by its alternate name, the Sea of Tiber Tiberius. Is that right? Tiberius. Tiber Tiberius. Okay. Is that it? Yes. 
I think yes. You want me to keep reading? No, no. We, we want to see if anyone has anything that they would like to add to this. This okay. is basically um, introducing the statement um, of just bringing us into what our Sunday school lesson is going to be talking about regarding Jesus by the Sea of Tiberia in the final um, chapter of St. John that um, this was the third time that the disciples had saw him. And this is it's just introducing the lesson this morning for us to get an understanding of what took place in chapter 21, because it said that it wasn't, you know, all through uh, chapters one through 20, you know, it, it was a part of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the writing of John and what he had witnessed and said, but it was saying that the 21st verse basically is giving us the introduction of the third time that the disciples had seen him. And, you know, they, we're not gonna go that far, but that's basically, was saying and that when it said that at this point the gospel of John comes to what seems to be the ending you know it's just the ending of the before he goes and sits on the throne of grace anybody else would like to add on to this um I, I don't think uh, it's not in the, the student book, but I, I like the, and the thing is, I, I didn't want to mention it because it was one of the questions that you said you was going to ask some questions. So <laughs> I didn't want to mention no, go it. Go right ahead, go right ahead. Hey, I, I just like the way the, they gave in, um, the other names, mm -hmm. the books of the books of the Bible, that the Sea of Tiberius is named other names. So that way you keep, you can kind of keep, because they, they, they often do that in certain, with certain places, they may refer to a name. And then by the time you get to the, the, uh, the gospels or the New Testament, you know, the epistles or something like that, it's called something else. So for example, if we look at Calvary, we know Calvary was the, the, the place of the skull, but they kind of, you know, interchange or use different different names at different times. And they do other places like that too in the, in the Bible. So I like the way they use those other uh, names of the sea that it gave reference to. And, and that's a good point. Um, and that was one of my questions because all the names that they gave, what was the one name that was used? Anybody say? That we know, ma'am. But the Sea of Galilee? Yes, ma'am. That's the one we relate to as the Sea of Galilee. But like you said, they were used many names before. And I, you know, um, thought that was interesting in part too, is how they identified this one sea. But as you read on, um, even after the, still called it the Sea of Galilee. You know, so it, it, I guess depends on the regions possibly that um, they named it the names that they had. Because the one name that um, Sinsen uh, Gennesaret, is that how you pronounce it? Gennesaret. Gennesaret, yeah. So it was used in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we see that it is the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything to add on to that? Now we're going to go to returning, return to fishing. I could get a reader. On this particular occasion, seven disciples were together. Th that Peter decided to go fishing should not be seen as unusual. He was, after all, a professional fisherman, along with his brother Andrew and other disciples decided to go with Peter if they were hoping to catch a lot of fish to take to market. These men were going to be disappointed. They caught nothing at all. So um, it's, it's not really uh, self-explanatory. Um, in the beginning when Jesus called Peter, and uh, brother Andrew, they, that's what they were doing. They were out fishing. So this is something that uh, that's not unusual. They were used to going fishing. 
in wow. hopes of uh, catching some fish, but it says they caught nothing. Yeah. Anyone else like to add to that? It was a lot more in the teacher's manual um, introducing or explaining who else uh, gave detail, who else was with Peter um, on the boat. And you know, they spoke about uh, Didymaeus, how we pronounce it, um, and Nathaniel was mentioned, uh, Bethalamu was mentioned. So it was saying who all went with fish, went fishing with Peter. It also mentioned there was two others that they didn't know who they were. Um, do we actually know who they were? Was the one of I think it was Paul? Was Paul? Did they no? no. Um. According to scripture, it said that it was unknown, so we don't know who the other two were. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I, I just liked uh, the way, you know, the, the lesson kind of down, you know, Peter's decision to go fishing because, you know, we've heard a lot of preaching about abandonment, that they just went back to doing what they were doing, but I like the way they broke it down in a sense, uh, you know, economically, you know, if they, they were following Jesus and now Jesus wasn't on the scene, you know, how are they gonna make a living? They had to wait for the next instructions. Jesus told him before he left that he was gonna send a confidant. Well, we know at this point, the confidant has not yet come. So, you know, the assignment has not yet been given. Uh, the great commission has not yet been given. So at this point, you know, how are they gonna make a living? How are they gonna survive? So, you know, by trade, Peter was a fisherman. <laughs> what else do he know to do to make money? So, uh, again, he went, he went to, to make money, went to, went to go fishing. That's his only, that's the only thing he knew to do uh, to, uh, to, to, make, to make a living. So, um, but I've heard some, some people beat Peter up for, uh, and, and the disciples for going back fishing. Hmm. What, what do you do to make, I mean, I look at it as resources. You know, what do they do? You know, Jesus, right now, Jesus wasn't walking with them. And, you know, they had to figure out what form of resources that they could do, you know. Um, so Peter, what he's best known as was to go fishing, you know. So um, it does lead into them meeting up with Jesus. As we're gonna go further into the Sunday school lesson. But there was one part um, when he said that Peter had a decision to go fishing. It said to be sure those called to gospel ministry should be adequately compensated. You know, so, you know, while they were still walking around waiting um, to um, the outcome of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know, they had to work. You know, and this is the scripture where it says that, you know, the man is worthy of their hire, you know, even with uh, our pastors in ministry, you know, when people feel that, why should I have to pay the pastor? But that's his job, that's his call, that's his responsibility. And it's our responsibility to pay the man of God that mm -hmm. is preaching to us, you know, that is working, that's constantly praying for us when we're not even praying for scripture said that he is worthy of his hire you know so they um you know as they was walking around they you know needed some source of income so they did what was best and you know if we even look at ourselves we can look within ourselves and um see that when we feel that we don't have um i can tell you a good example was when the um pandemic hit and all of a sudden People was making these um, masks, you know, they didn't know that they would ever have to make these masks, you know, for expenses to help out, you know, or to financially bless them. But it's just, you know, it was the same thing. What do we do? Now there were some resources that needed to come about. So, you know, people blessed other ones that had creative hands to make the mask, you know, and that, you know, I'm not saying all of them was the best, but some of them was awesome, you know, just being creative and using it. That was their form of resources at the time during the pandemic. So we have to 
think also outside of the box that, you know, when we're just walking in wilderness or you know in the wilderness as we feel that we are and we don't know um where we can find resources that you know we have to really think what are we capable of doing what are the best things what are we good at you know and i even thought about even with me when i didn't have resources i was driving lift never thought ever in my life that i would have to drive lift but i'm a good driver you know i've driven places to states to state. So if I could do that, I could have done it. But it was something that provided resources to me. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what this is what I had gotten out of this. With you know yes, sir. Somebody say something. Mm -hmm. But this is what I, you know, got. So we we all should sit and think what can I do with my hands when we when we're looking for finances or we looking for some resources? What am I good at? You know, yeah. they, it even emphasized that, you know, Peter was a fisher of fishes. So he did what he knew best. He went fishing for his resources. So that's what we have to look at as well is what am I good at? You know, what can I do? What can I do to bring other resources in for my family, for my church, you know, you know, that's what that's what I got out of this that's, um returning of the fish. Yes, sir. Okay, you, now that's good stuff while I was listening to, but I wanted to back up. I thought I heard y'all say y'all gonna stop paying the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you did say you're gonna be retired. You know you're worthy of your hot air, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean way. I can pay you with the government? I'm just letting that. y'all know. I'm listening. I'm listening. That's what I thought I heard. <laughs> <laughs> but but again, you know, those people that always uh, use reasons why not to go to church because they don't, you know, the offering and, you know, I'm not paying for the pastor's Cadillac or Mercedes or mm -hmm. stuff like that. It just, it's just lack like of knowledge and understanding the scripture. Uh, they get paid to do their work, but they don't want they don't want to pay nobody else to do theirs. I mean, but a uh, calling as a pastor is a larger responsibility and a lot of pastors don't work, you know, so how are they supposed to feed their families? How are they supposed to take care of themselves? Uh, back in the Old Testament, they 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 paid tithes to all the priests. Uh, and it says, and they put they kept it in the storehouse. So the priests got a tenth of everything. Because how because they, they didn't have they didn't have no work other than the, the ministry that God gave them. So how were they supposed yeah. to provide for themselves? Yeah, after after the uh uh disciples got commissioned, became apostles. Mm -hmm. uh, the folks basically, you know, took care of them because yeah. they were doing the spiritual, you know, the spiritual work of, of, of the church at when it, when the folks became the church at Antioch, right? That was the first time they, they mm -hmm. uh, mentioned that we were the church, but they were, they were discipled by Jesus Christ. And just think if they had jobs, if they had to go back to their old profession, of uh, tent making, mm -hmm. fishing and, whatever else you know the church would have been been uh stagnated the church would have been you know kind of out of order they needed they needed those gentlemen the 12 who turned the world upside down to not uh focus on <laughs> excuse me how they're going to live but basically the commission they were given yeah, they, they didn't have time for uh, all of that because oh, yeah. Think about, like you said, Pastor, you know, that's why they appointed deacons, because they had an issue with, with you know, that came up with, say, hey, we can't be dealing with these kind of matters. We got to we got to focus on what the word of God's prepared to to present the word of God. Absolutely. So imagine if they had to take care of that business as well as work, as well as, you know, study and, and prepare for the word through the word of God. They, they would have never had time to get a lot of stuff done. So. Yes, ma'am. I've heard, I've heard uh, that scripture explained once upon a time, like uh, bring ye all the time to the storehouse that there may be meat. <clears throat> and, and like I said, I've heard it explained like, you know, you, you have to give the, the preacher an income and the meat is so that he would have time to really get into the word so that he can give it to us which is, is the meat. And he doesn't have to worry about the resources because the resource right. is there. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yes. Thank you, Mother, for uh, confirming what I thought I heard earlier. 
<laughs> okay. Anyone else would like to add to that? If not, we're going to go to our second outline, which is a sudden abundance. If I could get a reader for a concerned question. Uh, re returning from a night of, of futile fur fishing, the disciples must have been discouraged. As the disciples were making their way back to shore, Jesus was waiting for them, but they did not recognize him at first. The light was probably still dim in the early morning, and there may have been a fog or mist hovering over the shoreline. <clears throat> we can therefore understand why it would be difficult to discern who was standing on the shore. Calling out to his disciples, the Lord asked him if they had any fish. Since they had caught nothing, they'd answered no. <clears throat> and this is self, uh, uh, this is self explanatory. They went fishing, didn't catch anything. And, and couldn't, like I say, it was the wee hour, because usually you go fishing in the wee hours or the morning <laughs> before the sun comes up. So it, it still makes it hard to see on the on the, on the shore, probably. But I have one question, and 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 on the uh, on in John twenty one five, it says Jesus said unto them, children, have ye any meat? I don't. I, this is the first time I heard Jesus call the disciples children. Is that the first time he called them children? That and, I that I can recall. Yeah, that's why I'm. That's why I was saying. Uh, first time me ever hearing Jesus call his disciples, you know his children. So that's why I wouldn't. I just want to know: is, is that the first time he ever called them children? That I can that's, that, that I can recall. I don't know about anybody else, but if we look at what was going on here, they didn't recognize who Jesus was, and he didn't expose himself to them. So he okay. didn't, didn't say Peter because he knew who they were. He's God, and okay. he knew everything. I don't want to get too far to the lesson, but he knew where to tell them where the fish at. <laughs> uh, right, but I'm just saying this is the first time I ever heard them address them as you know, as you know, disciples as as children. Mm -hmm. so. I but like then, the time before the resurrection, I would say like in the beginning, after Jesus called them for disciples, didn't Jesus uh tell them where to to let the net down on the right side of the boat to catch fish once before, before, you know, in the beginning. Well, it said that he told them to cast their net, but he, cast he didn't net. cast their net, but he didn't tell them to cast it on the right side. He mm -hmm. told them to cast their net. Yeah. But by them, um, by him telling them to cast the net, um, that's how they identified who he was because he was. it was something that they had remembered in their minds that what right. Jesus had told them to cast a net. And when he told them to cast a net on the right side, you know, to throw them off, to cast, to, you know, on the right side, but to cast the net was yes, what too. they understood, understood them to say. He told them to say cast the net, but in the scripture, it told them to cast the net on the right side. On the right, so, okay. you know, but the fact was that he told them to cast the net is how they had to they identify who the man that told them to cast the net was. Mm -hmm. I like uh, the practical point that talks about that portion of it uh, of of them not uh, you know even though it was in the wee hours in the morning uh, you know fog hovering over and and, it's, and, it's, and we we all know if you've been at the beach. Uh, or at a lake or something like that in, in the morning. Now they toiled all night. Now the sun hasn't risen yet. So it is going to be kind of dusk and they didn't recognize who he was at that time. But the practical points misses mentioned that sometimes we are so often preoccupied that we do not notice the Lord standing right in front of us. And I thought that was, that's the, um, that, you know, sometimes we can be too preoccupied that we can you know, we, we can't really hear what God is saying to us. Um, you know, we, we we pray about a lot of different things and the answer could be right there, but we are so focused on the situation that we don't even see the answer. So what was the concern question Jesus asked in this? That's my question today. I'm so, say that again? No, you're not allowed to answer, Elder. <laughs> okay. What was the concern question in this, this particular um paragraph that we just read about. 
they had caught any fish. There you go. The concern question was Jesus asked them, have they caught any fish? And one more thing I like to point out where it said that now um, book says, let us, the original disciples needed to learn lessons about patience in ministry as fishers of men. You know, we have to learn patience. You know, we're praying for our loved ones. We're praying people to get saved and they don't get saved right away. You know, we still have to have patience. They have to keep the faith that God is going to answer our prayers. So, I mean, that was a good one to um that was pointed out in the um, lesson this morning that we still, even though we are fishers or fishermen, um, we still have to have patience like in with them, you know, they called all night and they didn't catch any fish. And when Jesus asked them, had they caught any, you know, they said, no, no could have been of a frustration. You know, how many no's did we get, you know, and, just give up, you know, but, you know, being obedient to God and he says, go out the net. You know, God tell us, well, you know, it, your no is going to be a yes, but we just don't know how long the no's will turn into, will turn into the blessings that we're asking for. <clears throat> yeah, and it's, it's the same thing, you know, because I'm not a fisherman, but I, I you know, I, I respect that, the occupation, but sometimes, you know, when you're fishing, like, you know, you can go all night and not catch anything. And that's part of, that's part of, uh, you know, comes along with the territory. And, and even when we're uh, witnessing, it's the same thing. We can go witnessing and, uh, you know, we may not lead anybody to Christ, but we're planting the seed. Uh, and, and in some cases, we may, might, may not be using the right bait. You know, just like in fishing, when you go fishing, we find out that certain type of fish like certain type of bait, you know, so you got to have the right bait. Uh, in order to be able to catch something. And uh, and then just as Jesus says, sometimes you might not be in the right location that you're fishing. Mm -hmm. So you might need to go to another spot and, and cash your net. So, but again, patience is the key. You know, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. Um, there's a show called The Deadly Catch. You, everyone, anyone ever seen that? You know how they just, you know, I, I chuckle at that because that's the same with them. You know, they'll wait on night and they wait during the day and sometimes they're disappointed they'll go back and they don't have anything but then sometimes they wait and it seems like it's the 11th hour you know and they catch abundance and they're just so excited Woo boy we got this because they know that there's the resources that's their income yeah so you know so that's the same thing you know um sometimes it gets a little intense with that with that show but i i like watching it yeah, yeah. you know I understand that I went fishing with a couple of people on this. Uh, I did. On the, but you go ahead, Elder. I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it got a little intense. Um, I, I'm afraid of bait. So can I just be a fisherman on dry land? <laughs> I am so afraid of bait. I don't even want to hook the reel, but I'm going I can't to hook it to the word it. of God, sir. I'm going to the giant or safe way to fish. Oh, okay. Hey, I can do that. <laughs> well, if anybody need any advice, just ask me. Oh, God. Let us pray. <laughs> and it's an interesting point that Elder, point, um, Elder Milton brought out is that you got to know what type of bait to put on your hook, you know? And with us in the spiritual realm, we got to know what type of bait. We're not talking about a physical bait. But what is our bait? You know, because the scripture says loving kindness that I've drawn. So some of our baits, we got to know what to bait our, you know, people in with, what to use. And it is, you know, it's so many things. We can't do it with, you know, hatred. We can't do it with strife. You know, we can't do it with, you know, um, those things that we have to do it, you know, do positive things. So, beta man. Man, good stuff. Um, I have a, uh, just something funny. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I used to see these signs saying flea market, flea market. So right away, my mind is thinking fleas. And I said, oh, that must be something they use for fishing, for bait. <laughs> and later on, I find out that it's like, uh, you know. Um, bizarre. Bizarre. But it was this flea market, flea market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that was that was dumb. <laughs> no, no, mother, I'm laughing with you because when I was when I was uh, younger, I thought, oh, flea market. They probably had fleas. I don't know. We used to watch this cartoon yeah. where they had fleas. Uh, a flea circus had these fleas like jumping <laughs> off of things and things of that nature. So I thought it was something like that. So I was worse. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was something they used for fishing. But then when you think about a flea is so small, how in the world can they get that on a hook? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're gonna we're gonna go on one. We got a oh, few, it's almost 952. Um, the profitable advice. So it's taking a trip, taking a trip from from a uh, taking a tip from a stranger is not something most professional fishermen would care to do. But what? Uh, but if what they have already tried have not worked, have not been working, they might conclude that they have nothing to lose. That being so, the disciples were willing to follow the stranger's advice, namely to cast their nets, uh, their nets to the right side of the boat, in order to catch some fish. Some have surmised that Jesus merely had a better vantage point than the disciples to see where they were. Uh, that might be possible, but it really does not does not do uh, does does not do justice to the underlying under underlying purpose of Jesus's ad advice as this at, at this time. What was taking place was a. Uh, unmistakable demonstration of Jesus' divine wisdom and sovereignty power over creation. Clearly, the reason he told the disciples to cast their nets to the right was that was to remind them of the miracle that had that they they had witnessed near the beginning of the discipleship, recorded in Luke chapter five, one through six. On that occasion, Peter and the other fishermen had likewise been fishing all night with no success. Jesus told Peter to try casting his net net for fish. Once again, Peter protested since he was undoubtedly e exhausted from fishing all night and had had his feel, feel of it, but he obeyed the Lord's words uh, anyway. Of course, their nets were immediately filled, so uh, to the breaking point with fish. Since Peter, James, and John had been been there on the on that previous occasion, what happened next was unmistakably a sign that immediately revealed uh, to them that they ident that that the true identity of this stranger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Um, that's that's. What I think we would just talk about that a little bit. Um, in a sense, uh, you know, but one thing that kind of stood out uh, that I, I was reading it, you know, the practical point says we can confidently do what Jesus says because we know who he is. So the advice that when Jesus uh, uh, given us uh, or leading or guiding us, we can confidently know that, you know, that Christ is leading us in the right direction without a doubt. Amen. 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 Any other comments? And we're going to try to finish this last um, sudden uh, comprehension. That was good. Um, it's 9.55. I'm not sure if we're going to get through all of which I hope that we would have, but um, if we could get a reader for Southern Compensation. At this point, the disciple whom Jesus loved, presumably John, identified the figure on the shore. Since it was none other than the Lord Jesus himself, John declared, it is the Lord. Peter immediately put on, put on his outer tunic. Naked likely indicates he was clothed only in the undergarments suitable for his trade, jumped into the sea and swam to shore. The other disciples, followed in the boat, still dragging the net, teeming with a heavy load of fish. Now, this, this one. I, yeah, no, well, I just wanted to say something about the naked part. At first I thought, you know, why was he fishing <laughs> naked? But I... <laughs> 
<laughs> understand now that um, the fishermen, yeah, they do have a, 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 you know, if you look at um, fishing, well, I don't even know how to explain it, but the fishermen's on the boat, they do have some type of jacket over top of their clothes and they have on those uh, fishermen's boots, the tall boots and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I guess, like I said, he had pulled the the uh, the jacket off. But why would he put the jacket back on to to jump in the sea? <laughs> it's strange. Well, you know, we look at the translation of what it's saying. <clears throat> you know, even even if we you go on Isaiah uh, and it talked about the nakedness and it speak of the nakedness was showing in anything above the knee. So translation, when you read, when we read it, it said he was naked, he wasn't literally naked, but he was showing his nakedness, which is something that they wasn't supposed to do. So that's probably why he grabbed his coat and put it on so that he can leave his nakedness. Even though he wasn't bare naked, he was revealing his nakedness. And I just thought maybe he just had his shirt off. He was saying they don't show um, a lot of their skin, you know, maybe it was hot or whatever. And I just took it as he didn't have a shirt on. Yeah. We went on last, oh, okay. No, I think we said something last week. Remember when they were talking about um, with Christ? He was saying that when he was hung on the, uh, on the crucifix, he was naked, you know, but he knows that he still had on you no know, cloth to cover his, uh, you know, his, uh, his private part, but they, they classify that as being naked too. Yeah, and you got to look at it though. But when we talk about the humiliation, that's what what stood out to me when they talk mm -hmm. about the humiliation part. That is humiliating to be bare naked. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they did the criminals back then, and the way they did Christ, that was part of the crucifixion. But it's different here when they say that Peter was naked, because again, that that's not they wasn't bare naked in a sense. Uh, uh, Peter wasn't. He basically, like I said, based on his occupation, he basically, they didn't have the stuff that like Mother Melton was saying, the long boots and all that stuff. They just basically had their cloak and their undergarment and to be comfortable in heat and out there on the ocean, they had to, you know, he stripped down to what he can feel comfortable and work. I mean, that's, that's what a lot of people do whenever it depends on their occupation. They want to be comfortable. But again, you know, he, you know, his nakedness was still exposed at that time. And like I said, when he jumped off the, well, he grabbed his coat, he wanted to cover up his nakedness. Um, but one part I like about that, and I know we got to close, it says that, you know, in the practical points, it's just, I, I kind of love the way it says, so we ought to leap to the opportunity to spend time with Jesus. When, when, when Peter knew that it was Jesus, he didn't waste no time. He, <laughs> He said it was only 100 yards from the water. He couldn't wait to roll back. He jumped out and swam. Exactly. Exactly. And that's how anxious we should be as well. It's a good point you brought out. And that's what I was going to say is that, you know, he was only maybe less than 100 yards away. He jumped out the boat, you know, and went to see. That's just how excited he was. And if we ever get that excited, you know, about the Lord, you know, and they, the ones that was in the boat, well, you know, they could have did the same thing, but they knew they had to fish in the boat. But the other point that, um, one thing that I like, and I know it's 10 o'clock, was that on this occasion, when they caught the fish, the nets didn't break. Yeah. It was the abundance. It was enough for what they needed. So that was a good point they brought out. We thank the Lord for our Sunday school um, this morning. We thank the Lord for those that are um, by way of Facebook. We praise God for um, everyone that participated on the Zoom call. And uh, we just want to say that um, today at 11 o'clock, we will be at our sanctuary lifting up the name of Jesus, following the um, CDC um, guidelines, even though they may have lifted the mask, we're still being used in wisdom uh, with our mask and we just want to invite you out to um, our church 4516 Beach Road in Temple Hills, Maryland, where our pastor is Michael Isaac and First Lady Angela Isaac um, is our shepherds and we praise God for um, then this afternoon we have a two o'clock um, service. Um, what are the abbreviations? C-A-S- 
in capital capital region capital, capital area southern maryland diocese um service fellowship service you at two o'clock i just want to say that if you not finished serving the lord at two o'clock please come and join us and um if you would like to give in the sunday school this morning uh we do have the resources of givelify uh, Partagas Church of Christ uh, Ministries, you could give to that. And we just thank God for all that he has done on this day. And at this time, if I'm not forgetting anything else, we're going to ask Elder Nate to close us out. I mean, Jesus, Dick and Nate to close us out. <laughs> all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Proof for correction and righteousness that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. God bless everyone. Hope to see everyone at 11 o'clock. Thanks for everyone's participation. Amen. Amen.